close up here and catch up with those other wagons. This is unhealthy country for stragglers. I might have known. A persuasion fails he tries to frighten people. Well, you can ride right back and tell that wagon master that I have no intention of being badgered, bamboozled, or bullied into paying him 40 of my hard-earned dollars. Well, I think there must be some kind of misunderstanding. You're not one of Chris Hale's minions? Well, uh, <clears throat> not exactly. My mistake. You don't look like a man who'd work for a pirate. Pirate? Well, what else would you call a man who charges such outrageous fares? Do you realize he pays his scouts $30 a month? That's nearly four times what a school teacher makes. Well, possibly scouting is a little more dangerous than teaching. You ever faced a schoolroom full of eighth grade boys? No. Then don't talk nonsense. Well, I assure you, madam. Miss, not madam. Miss Mary Lee McIntosh, formerly of Swampscott, Massachusetts. But I don't think you fully realize the dangers and difficulties. My father always said, where there's a will, there's a way. Did your father ever make this crossing? He always wanted to. He didn't live to see his dream come true. I'm sorry. Why should you be sorry? You didn't know him. False sentiments have no value, my father always said. No value at all. All right, then, Miss McIntosh. I'll give you a true sentiment. There's not a chance in the world you can make this crossing by yourself. And as for that wagon master, you might even find you'll get to like him once you get to know him. That's one man's opinion. <laughs> Barney. Hi, Chris. Mr. Chris? Welcome home, Mr. Chris. Sure glad to see you back. Wait till I tell you what... You know, Chris, uh, Charlie's been as nervous as a cat in a thunderstorm. Waiting to find out how that serial ended in that adventure magazine. Oh, that. Well, the fact is, I found the magazine at the fort, but I lost it again. Lost my magazine? How could you do a thing like that? Well, the same way I lost my horse. Lost your horse? Yeah, I had a little Indian trouble. Indians? One Indian, Barney. He was in the guardhouse at the fort on a minor charge. And his escape was very unique in the annals of jailbreaks. It was engineered by a photographer who wanted to take his picture. They waited until after dark when all the guards were being changed. Well, that should have made him suspicious right there. Who ever heard of taking a picture after dark? <laughs> well, it seems that this Delaney has been experimenting with powder charges to give off a flash of light. You don't say. When he took this picture, it caused so much confusion that the Indian, a Mr. Man Who Steals Ponies, got away on a horse. My horse. Yeah, it's a good thing things have been quiet around here while I've been gone. Yeah. <clears throat> Wagons strewn all over the countryside. Just one wagon, Chris. It's not one of ours. That belongs to a school teacher, Mr. Chris. Miss McIntyre. Mary Lee McIntyre. And she's one of the most hard-headedest women I've ever tried to talk to. Just wait till you hear some of her arguments. Apparently, you boys didn't make much of an impression. I don't see why it's so difficult to convince an intelligent woman of the advantages of traveling with the Hale wagon train. Well, it was like this, Mr. Chris. We actually tried, but she's not very neighborly, you know. For one week now, she's been tagging along behind us, taking advantage of our guidance and protection. Won't pay us a penny for it. Well, maybe you boys just don't know how to handle women. Right. <laughs> Takes a lot of diplomacy, patience to deal with a strong-minded member of the weaker sex. You are Chris Hale? At your service, ma'am. At a price, of course. Well, Miss McIntosh, we have tried to point out to you the dangers and disadvantages of your traveling alone. Now, before I let you endanger any one of my people, I'll send the boys back here and we'll move your wagon up with the others by force if we have to. 
Only until the next settlement, Mr. Hale. There are laws against coercion. Also, extortion. Good day, Mr. Hale. Supper ready yet, Charlie? Been ready for 10 minutes, just waiting for Mr. Chris. He's back there arguing with that school teacher. We could starve to death waiting for him. I wasn't heading that way when I saw him. Maybe he's giving up trying to persuade her. Whose side are you on? Well, I don't know, Charlie. I'd hate to see that woman get the best of Chris. But I'll tell you one thing for sure. If he wins out, we'll never hear the end of it. Hale? Bill? Bill? Yeah? What's wrong, eh? It's his Macintosh. I think she's in trouble. What kind of trouble? Her wagon turned over a couple of miles back. I think she's busted an axle. Was she hurt? No, she's all right. Horses weren't hurt either. Well, I reckon we all ought to go back and give her a hand, huh? Well, nobody's going anywhere, Charlie. You fixed a delicious supper here. I did? We're not going to spoil it. What are you going to do, Mr. Chris? Well, I'm going to sit down right over here and enjoy the first meal I have enjoyed since encountering the lady. And I am going to thank the divine providence for giving me the opportunity to say goodbye to Miss Mary Lee McIntosh. <laughs> How did you ever manage to do such a thing? How I managed to do it is beside the point. What I'm going to do about it is what concerns me at the moment. Well, if you'd taken my advice, it never would have happened. I am willing to ask for help quite humbly, Mr. Hill, but I do not intend to eat crow. Everything I own in the world is in that wagon. I need it repaired. And I am willing to pay a reasonable amount. Well, Miss McIntosh, you are in no position to bargain. I am not going to hold up the entire wagon train to accommodate someone who isn't even a member. Mr. Hale, you've made your point. As my father always said, when you've made your point, don't belabor it. I don't think it would do your reputation very much good to go off and leave a lone woman stranded. Mr. Chris wouldn't do a thing like that. The fact is, your wagon is beyond repair. In that case, how much will you overcharge me to transport me and my books to the next town? There's room for you, Miss McIntosh, but not for all those books. The entire library of my school is in that wagon. I do not budge one step without it. Well, in that case, I'll have Charlie drive you to the fort. But even if they have a wagon for sale, it'll be expensive. And I doubt if Colonel Cantwell will let you start out alone. Perhaps an officer and a gentleman will be more understanding of my situation. Well, perhaps even an officer and a gentleman might get slightly aggravated at a willful woman who insists on having her own way one minute and then appeals to a gentleman's gallantry to rescue her from her own folly the next. I see no gallantry in you to appeal to, Mr. Hale. All you've done since you've been here is to gloat. Gloat? What I've offered... Your offer is refused, Mr. Hale, with thanks. All the stubborn, unreasonable... That's what the pot said to the kettle. I don't want to put you to any more trouble, Mr. Hale. If you'll just have Mr. Worcester draw me a map, I'll ride one of the horses to the fort. Oh, you'll do nothing of the kind. Whenever a man knows he's been unfair, he starts to shout. I did not shout. Miss McIntosh, you will ride to that fort on a wagon with Charlie if we have to rope and hog tie you. Never fails. When a man like that loses an argument, he resorts to threats of brute strength. <laughs> Here, this is for you. Why oh, isn't this? Now, it's a collection of great thoughts. I want you to have it. Say, that might come in handy, you know. Maybe the boys will get a mite more respect for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Miss Mary, I sure hope you find a way to get these books to California so you can open that school that your pappy's always dreamed about. Oh, I'll find a way, Mr. Worcester. Yeah. I'll find some way. And she did. She found Delaney. Well, as her father would have said, beggars can't be choosers. And it was cheaper paying his bail than buying a new wagon. Oh, thank you, Mr. Delaney. Right over there, please. And you can take this out. 
Oh, now, wait a minute. We both agree that all non-essentials should be left behind. Well, we both have different ideas about what's non-essential. Now, I say that stays. All right, Mr. Delaney. However, I must warn you, the trail is very rough. It's liable to get smashed. Is that a threat? Threat, Mr. Delaney? It's a promise. And what's in here? Stereoptic views. I sell them. Why, they're beautiful, Mr. Delaney. Thanks. You ought to see it on the machine. It gives a real three-dimensional effect. It's outrageous. It's also my best seller. You bailed me out of jail so I could take you and your books to California. I don't tell you what books to leave behind. You don't tell me what pictures to leave behind. Very well, Mr. Lenny, I agree. But we don't take the whiskey. As my father always said, strong drink is not only the devil's way into a man, it is man's way to the devil. And mine always used to say, trouble sure makes strange bedfellows. About the um, sleeping arrangements, Mr. Delaney. Right behind you. It comes down. We'll take turns. Ladies first. Thank you, Mr. Delaney. Don't mention it. a quagmire from here to here. Now, if we swing north... Can you hold that noise down a little, Charlie? I can't hear what Bill's saying. Yes, sir. Charlie, did you pick up that magazine while you were at the fort? No, I didn't have nerve enough to stay and see the look on that poor one's face and she found out there wasn't a wagon for sale. You tell me you feel sorry for her, too. You know, after all, Charlie, she brought it on herself. The trouble with you is there ain't none of you student enough of human nature to see what a fine woman she is. Spending all them years teaching, taking care of her paw just trying to make his dream of a school in California come true. And all you have to do is talk to her. We all talked to her, Charlie, and we warned her what might happen. It ain't enough to know what to say. You have to know how to say it. That's Aristotle, you know. Yeah. Rise and shine, Mr. Blaney. early bird that catches the worm, Mr. Delaney. I'm not interested in catching any worms, Miss McIntosh. But we must use every moment of daylight to catch up with the wagon train. So while you finish loading, I'll cook breakfast. I can't wait to see the expression on Chris Hale's face when he sees us. Oh, no. developed an uneasy truce between me and Miss Mary Lee McIntosh for a few weeks. I tried not to notice that wagon as it trailed through our same wheel ruts. Where's Charlie? He hasn't even started supper. In school. In school? Yep. The teacher's holding classes in Delaney's wagon out there camp closer. Holding classes? She's taking money to teach children on my train after refusing to pay her own way. Charlie says it's reasonable. He says it's good for the kids. Keeps them out of mischief. Says all the kids like her. They may outgrow that. It was Patrick Henry who said, give me liberty or give me death. Yes, ma'am. That's very good. It was in that book you gave me. A Bible and a newspaper in every home and a good school in every district are the principal supports of virtue, morality, and civil liberties. Benjamin Franklin said that. And you might remind Mr. Hale of it if he makes any mention of your attending classes. Yes, ma'am. That'll be all for tonight. Come on, Julius. I'll hold Charlie. They got some cookies. Miss McIntosh says it's good enough to send to the Harper's Weekly. 
Well, I'm not much of a judge. You see, with a painting, people always say, well, did it really look like that? Now, with a photograph... Did you ever get $35,000 for one of your pictures, Mr. Delaney? That's the price that was paid in New York last year for a painting very much like that. And from here's the book I want you to study next. Eight art masterpieces of the world. All right? Thank you. That boy has a spark of genius, and I won't let you turn him into an ordinary picture taker any more than I'll let his father turn him into a plow pusher. You make them both sound like sinful occupations. Any waste of talent is sinful. You have talent. This is beautiful. It's something you can be proud of. And you rush around wasting your time on trash, dance hall girls, and... Those women will have a place in my book because they're a part of this life. This whole pageant of people. Because good history is just like good whiskey. It's no good if you water it down to pacify the pious paragons of virtue. Shakespeare, Mr. Delaney. Yes. I like to read myself to sleep. You needn't be ashamed of reading Shakespeare, Mr. Delaney. My father always said that books were a man's best friend. Well, for once, your father made some sense. frightening moments, they faced death and disaster. But talk about the luck of the Irish. Who do you think the leader of the party turned out to be? None other than Delaney's old friend, that horse thief. Mr. Delaney, when you and your blood brother finish talking about old times, would you ask this revolting mastodon to take his hands off me? Yashkoka! Yamani! Wait up! Abishnell, Abishnell. Oh. He says he wants to buy you. He what? He says his name is Stinking Bear. It's an apt description. Says he'll give me three horses for you. Give you? Well, they think you're my squaw. What? Well, you'll have to admit it looks that way. Well, I hope you told him. What did you tell him? I told him I'd have to see the horses. Why don't you entertain them while I see if I can dig up that photograph I took of the man who steals ponies? If they go back empty-handed, they'll be a disgrace to the tribe. <laughs> you, uh, you smell something burning, Bill? Holy mackerel. I was so busy reading that book so I could discuss it with Miss Mary, I plumb forgot tomorrow's bread. You're going to discuss a book with a school teacher? Well, certainly. We talk about all kinds of things. That's why we get along so well. We have so much in common. Yeah, I know, like she taught the third grade for three years, and it took you three years to get through it. <laughs> Where's Mr. Grace? Oh, you had to go to some meeting. What kind of a meeting? Where? What? Charlie, don't get so curious. Curiosity is one of the permanent and certain characteristics of a vigorous intellect. That's Samuel Johnson. Where are you going? I'm going to see Mr. Hale. If you're not going to tell him about our visitors, I am. Well, they didn't do any harm. Why get everybody in an uproar? They're long gone. I just want to make sure they know what happened in case I should disappear and you should suddenly acquire three horses. Don't be ridiculous. Why, this is a book of the great masterpieces of art. Well, you may call it that. I call it disgraceful. And I've had my fill of her meddling with my boy Ephraim. Putting fancy ideas in his head about thousands of dollars. Tell him what happened to you, Kurt. Give my girl this book on medicine. Said they'll help nurse her ma. 
I took one look at it and I threw it right into the fire. It ain't fitting for a girl to know things like that. It ain't fitting for children to be taught by a woman putting on airs and living out there like that with that picture-taken fella. It's a scandal, Mr. Hale. It's a scandal. As you know, I don't see eye to eye with Miss McIntyre, but I'm not going to put up with this kind of talk. Reckon he's right, Molly. Woman with her looks wouldn't have a chance not to be good. Besides, Delaney seems to prefer those pretty dance hall girls anyway. All right, you've all had your say. Now I'm going to have mine. No, Mr. Hale. I'll have mine. Three Indians came to visit us tonight. They were after our horses. Mr. Delaney knew one of them, so they left us in peace. He doesn't think they'll be back, but I can't take that chance. I can't put the children in that kind of jeopardy. So school is closed. Your money will be refunded. And for once, she was right. Now I have an invitation from Chief Whirlwind, leader of the whole Southern Cheyenne, to take pictures of him and his people. The and all you can no, say is. Mr. Delaney, a final and unequivocal. <laughs> no. Delaney had a creed. If you can't fight him, outsmart him. When he couldn't win with words, and who could with Mary Lee, he used the only weapon he was familiar with, booze. Figuring that by the time Miss Mary recovered from a lethal dose of spirits, they'd be at the Indian camp. Yes, Mr. Delaney, I know you're anxious to go to bed. I'll be right out. Charlie sent something over for your cold. It's on the fire. He said it's best to drink it while it's hot. trail tomorrow, I gotta drink it all. What an odd flavor. Herbs. It's an old Indian recipe. Charlie said it's best if you drink it down real fast at first. Warm you up. Once you get accustomed to it, it's really quite tasty, isn't it? Quite tasty indeed. Well, we'll have to give Charlie a good grade in chemistry, huh? <laughs> Depends how I feel in the morning. Did you take chemistry in school, Mr. Delaney? I never got that far. I had a fifth grade teacher who believed sparing rods spoiled boys. So one day I broke the rod, right over his head. Good for you. Only argument my father and I ever had. Can't teach children by force and harshness. You have to divert them, try to find their real interests, their real talent. You and Plato, huh? I can't make up my mind about you, Mr. Delaney. Well, it's best not to make up your mind about anybody. That's very profound. You're very profound. You're very puzzling, too. You know Plato, you read Shakespeare, you... You run around photographing wicked women. And you write prose that reads like poetry. I see you've been snooping. It's an accident, I assure you. They do have a strangely beautiful way of saying things, don't they? The Indians, I mean. Like, like the way they call you shadow catcher. Yeah, they're, they're remarkable people. So, so kind of you. It's very relaxing, isn't it? I may have misjudged you. Father always said I wasn't a confident 
judge of men. So he judged them for you and nobody was right, huh? How is it you? That's so true. That's oh so true, Mr. Glenn. Nobody was right. Not that they were breaking down my door, but there were a few. Not right. <laughs> I wonder what he would have thought of stinking there. <laughs> He always said he was doing it for my happiness. Your father was doing it so he wouldn't have the expense of hiring a regular housekeeper. Oh, Mr. Delaney. Well, how much did he pay you? He pay me? I was his daughter. I had my allowance. Allowance? I bet it wasn't a pittance compared to what you were worth for teaching and keeping house someplace else. All he gave a hang about was his dream and his school in California. And now that he's dead, you still haven't declared your independence. You want to go out there to that land and build a monument to his memory? That land? And the building on it are the only things he left me. But they're mine. They're all mine. And it's going to be run my way, the way a school should be run. It's just as important to me as your pictures are to you. Everything's out of focus. Yeah, I'll help you inside. If you will recall, it's not my night to sleep inside. Come on now. This is no time to be prim and proper. I was brought up to be prim and proper by a puritanical, patronizing, parsimonious, persnickety, pedantic, Penny pinching trig. Delaney won his battle. He lost no time making tracks to the Indian village, but he reckoned without Mary Lee's iron constitution. feel better as soon as I get you some breakfast. Oh, please don't bother. Well, don't bother at all. Breakfast for you, dinner for me. Dinner? What time is it? Oh, about noon, I guess. I don't know. My watch is under the pillow. Huh. Unless you moved it. Oh, your watch? Habit of mine. Always put my watch under the pillow before I go to bed. Still running, huh? You were sleeping so soundly this morning, I was afraid to get it. At best 11. Oh, now, honey, don't bother about that old shirt. It was an accident. It was? Sure. I'll fix you some breakfast, huh? Anything violent. 
I remember we had a, an argument about going to the Indian village. After that, everything got um, hazy. You don't remember the disagreement we had in the, in the wagon about whether or not you should take off my shirt? Oh. Where are the wagons, Mr. Delaney? Back on the main trail. But why aren't we back on the main trail? You don't remember that either? Remember what? Changing your mind about going to the Indian village. I'd have to be out of my mind to change my mind about a thing like that, Mr. Delaney. You don't remember anything? <sighs> not how important you thought my work was? Not even the... Not even anything. Mr. Delaney, as soon as I am dressed, we will head back toward the wagon train. <laughs> For the first time in her pure and puritanical life, Miss Mary Lee McIntosh drew a blank. And it suited Delaney's purpose to let her believe the worst. What'd you do that for? I should have known better than to trust a man like you. Well, I cured your cold, didn't I? You kidnapped me. There are laws against kidnapping and, and taking advantage of defenseless women. When Mr. Hale hears about this... Well, first, he has no jurisdiction in the matter because you never paid your fare. Second, I'm perfectly willing to do the right thing by you. And third, we have no choice about turning back now. Shadowcatcher has big magic. Shadowcatcher better have. I don't know as much about Indians as Shadowcatcher does, but that looks like a war party to me. What's the matter with you? First you're gonna eat with us and then you ain't. You've been mooning around all day like you had spring fever. Then all of a sudden you're raring to go. is isn't spring fever, Charlie. It's love. But he got an invite from his girl. What? Him and that little girl, they're nothing but kids. Well, what about Romeo and Juliet? Romeo and Juliet? I don't recall anybody that name on the train. Shakespeare, Charlie. Oh. Romeo and Juliet Shakespeare. Well, so many people travel on the train, I can't remember everybody. <laughs> My memory is a thing I forget with. That's anonymous, you know. Who? Anonymous. Henry Anonymous. 1789-1850. You'd be surprised at all the great things he wrote. All right, you'll be safe in here. Well, what's going on out there? The Stegenberry is telling them that the people in the wagon train aren't just passing through. They're here to stay. They have to be driven out. What are we going to do? Well, we'll be safe as long as we remain their honored guest. If you think that I'm going to sit here while those people are ambushed, you've got another thing coming. We've got to get out of here. I don't think our friends would think too kindly on that. As your father would say, discretion is the better part of valor. My father never thought of anybody but himself in his whole life. i got to get out of the wagon and get those pictures. Listen. If you get a chance, make a break for it. Don't, don't think about me. Just think about the people in the wagon train. Oh, 
I, uh, I saw these and I, well, I thought of you. I hoped you were long gone. Now, look, everything we got is in that wagon. What kind of man are you, anyway? One who counts the odds. The odds just aren't right. What do you expect to find in that bottle? Courage? Now, look, if you got any idea about playing Joan of Arc, forget it. Remember, she was burned at the stake. It was a mean, miserable trick. Letting me believe that you were reading Shakespeare. Had some shred of culture. Well, if you remember that, you must remember that you like the taste, too. And the effect. You said it was very relaxing. I hope you understand that that was the first time, the very first time that I ever... tasted strong drink. No one will ever hear it from me. Come get a while it's hot. The thing hot I want right now is a tub of water. This robe has a tribe of its own. I think he got the plague. He's been known to wipe out whole villages in a few days. I'll be coming to burn the lodge. That's in it. No. The war party left before dawn. You could catch it. And I called you a coward. Oh, Mr. Delaney, dear Mr. Delaney, before I die, I want you to know something. I want you to know I forgive you. Everything. something fierce. The sun's got nothing to do with it. You make it sound like saving our scalps was some kind of a sin. To know what is right to do and not to do it is want of courage. Who said that, your father? Confucius. You and your copybook maxims. Well, how about this one? What the fool does in the end, the wise man does in the beginning. What does that mean? The cavalry's trained to cope with Indian uprisings. That's what it means. What if there's nobody left alive when they get there to cope? I think of those children. I get an empty feeling right here. Well, that's because you're not eating. Don't you ever think of anybody but yourself? It hurts the way they try to kill me. And you'd wind up the squaw's stinking bear. I could face that a lot easier than I could, walking around trying to look people in the eye, knowing that I was alive only because I put my life ahead of a hundred other lives. What have you got to say to that, Mr. Delaney? Nothing. That's what I got to say. Nothing. <laughs> Come on, let's, let's get out of here. This, this sun's making me dizzy. Oh. Oh. Good night, sweetheart. 
sweet prince. You just had to have it your way, didn't you? You were right. Listen. We're caught right in the middle. But I'm not afraid, Mr. Delaney. Honestly, I'm not. Oh, sure. You and Joan of Arc. The only difference is she inspired men. You Shanghai him. All we need now are the voices to tell you what to do. I don't have voices, Mr. Delaney, but I do have you. You think on it, Mr. Delaney. You'll find a way. I know you will. How's it look, Bill? There's a whole bunch of them up on top of that slope there. They're hooping and hollering and dancing. Even old Chief Whirlwind himself. Whirlwind? That's a fellow Dan was going to take pictures of. Wonder what happened to him. Well, 24 hours with Miss McIntosh should put anybody on the warpath. Look, don't hold that landing so close or we'll both go up and smoke. Well, all we have to do now is get some sleep and hope that a breeze comes up by morning. We'll make it, Mr. Delaney. I know we will. You know, I was wrong about you. You and Joan of Arc got a lot in common. She was a saint. I want to apologize and explain to you about the other night. No need to do that now, Mr. Delaney. What's done is done. Well, you see, when you didn't remember, I... Well, I figured you'd be a lot easier to handle if you weren't feeling so high and mighty. When I put you in the wagon, you... Well, you noticed the button messing off my shirt. You wanted to fix it for me. You said it was the least you could do. <laughs> me being so kind. Well, just as I put you down, you had hold of it and it... Well, it ripped just before you passed out. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. Because nothing happened that night. Oh. Well, not... Not that I wasn't tempted, mind you. Thank you, Mr. Blaine. I just want you to know I'm sorry. So am I. What do you got to be sorry about? Oh, I misjudged you. I wonder if Victor Hugo's right. About what? He wrote that the greatest happiness in life comes from the conviction that we are loved. Loved for ourselves, or rather, in spite of ourselves. Why didn't you wake me? Well, I want you to get all the sleep you can. I'm ready to go. Look, It'll be something to tell our grandchildren about, won't it? Do me a favor, will you? Anything. Wait here for me. Mm. Can't you do anything you're told? I spent my whole life doing what I was told. I spent my whole life without love. Now, if we live, we're going to live together, and if we die, we're going to die together, and that's the way it's going to be. So don't try to get away from me again, Mr. Delaney. Quite a woman, you know that.
To burn us out? Well, if that's their strategy, it's backfired. Wind's in the wrong direction. Dad! Indians must have got to him, Charlie. Yeah. Horses are cut loose. Dad! You all right, Miss Mary? Dan? There's nothing you can do oh. here. Bill will take care of everything. I'll walk you back to the wagon train. 